Welcome to the second Sunday of Advent at Nehalem Bay United Methodist Church. We are one of the congregations of the Tillamook County Methodist United. Nehalem Bay United Methodist Church, Tillamook United Methodist Church, Bay City United Methodist Church, our beloved Camp Magruder. As a matter of fact, this particular Sunday, uh, Troy Taylor, our director from Camp Magruder, is preaching in Tillamook at the United Methodist Church. We'll try to get him here sometime soon again. Let's see. For those of you who are joining us by Zoom, we do ask that you keep your uh, microphones muted. We suggest that you might pin our main uh, frame here. At the bottom of your screen, you will find a little uh, talk balloon that says chat. If you click on the chat, chat comes up. You can put your prayer requests into chat, and we will read them later. For those of you here, your prayer requests can just come from the floor. I want to let you know that um, our three churches in our camp are following a common worship for Advent called Close to Home. Uh, reckoning that after the last two years of pandemic, if there's anything we need, it's home. So our scriptures and the Advent wreath lighting will be coming to you from different congregations each week. This week, our Advent wreath lighting will be coming to you from Tillamook United Methodist Church. And standing in for the folks at Tillamook United Methodist Church, uh, Peter Nunn and uh, some guy will be doing the readings uh, for you today. Our hymns will be led by the Halem Bay United Methodist Church COVID Choir. The words will be up on the screen for you. Uh, those of you at home, please sing along with gusto. Those of you here, uh, mumble into your masks a bit more. And as I said, we will be celebrating Holy Communion as part of today. So with that, I invite you to worship God together. Our call to worship. If life was a home, then we would pray, may love be the foundation. May, may God be the cornerstone. cornerstone. May, may the, the spirit, spirit be the windows, windows ushering, ushering light in. in. And may, may hope be the walls holding, holding us together. In, the, uh, in this hour of worship, let us work towards building that home together. We, we may, may not, not know the path ahead, but God, God is, is here, here even, even now. now. Let, Let us, us give us thanks for a foundation of love. Let, Let us, us worship, worship Holy, Holy God. God. Starting at verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion 
until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. As we reflect on the foundation of our faith in our lives, we gather together around the candle of peace. The home we long for is a home that knows peace. Peace that rests between us and our grief. Peace around our anxiety. Peace between us and our self-criticism. Peace amidst our relationships. Peace at the core of our being. Peace hovering through and in our world. The home we long for is a home that knows peace. So today we light the candle of peace. As a reminder and as a prayer. Let it be so. Amen. Participate in the hymn, The Church is One Foundation. Reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, 68 through 79, Zachariah's song at the birth of John the Baptist. 
Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty warrior for us in the house of his servant David, and he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies, from the hands of those who hate us. Thus he has showed the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness, before him all of our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins, by the tender mercies of our God. The dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. While well, to get a chance to read the scripture, even though I appreciate all of our lay readers so much, you know, belief isn't what it used to be. I mean, nowadays, if you say, well, that's what I believe, it sounds almost like an apology. And the opposite, well, that's just what you believe, I mean, it sounds like an accusation. And faith hasn't fared much better. You know, to have faith is often to see, as to believe something against proof or facts or even common sense. Now, back in the day, say, a thousand years ago, your belief was your credo. It was the foundation on which you built your life, how you conducted your business, how you treated your, your friends, your family, those who you considered to be family, even those you considered to be your enemies. Uh, all these essential expressions of who you are they were built on the foundation of your credo, your belief, your faith. Now, yeah, maybe we aren't all so different, though. You know, people still seem to believe their whole lives, they build their whole lives on their belief. Uh, the people who stormed the Capitol, you know, who took over the House of Representatives, the Senate, assaulted the Capitol Police, all of that was built on the belief that there was a massive fraud in our last presidential election. Uh, the people who are splitting the United Methodist Church apart, they, they all base that on their belief that the Bible speaks against same-sex partnerships. And those who seek to maintain the social preeminence of, of uh, people with pale skin, well, they believe that they believe that, that is the order God created things in. All these, all these folks build their action towards others on their beliefs. They're living out their credos. Maybe the problem is their beliefs are just too small. Zechariah, in the great hymn that you heard read by some random person just a moment ago, it's the hymn that he did on John the Baptist's birth, building his faith on the belief not just in the God of Abraham, not just in the tender mercies of that God, but on the covenant between God and the people and the redemption that results from that covenant. Paul, in uh, his introduction to the uh, letter to the Philippians, something that Peter read just a moment ago, he builds on his belief of a common love and compassion that they have together, rooted in the grace of God. Now both are building on a foundation of a community of belief, not just my personal beliefs that I have, but a community of belief that first and foremost believes in community. So, you know, is this just an old idea? I mean, both of those were written a long time ago. I mean, can we actually do that today in our complex world? 
Well, let me tell you a story, because that's what I do. I tell stories. There was a, a neighborhood once in a major city in middle America. And like most large cities, you know, all the different neighborhoods were originally um, built by folks from the, you know, they housed folks from the same country, immigrants to this country, uh, somehow found each other and were able to build a little bit of home in the new land. Now these neighborhoods had lots of little shops and lots of little businesses that reflected the talents and trades that the folks brought with them from the old country. Talents and trades that defined who they were. Talents and trades that were their gift to the community. Uh, these folks had come to this country for a better life for their children. And they worked hard to send their children on in higher education for this new life, this better life. And most of those children of immigrants found it. And they found it in the suburbs leaving behind the old neighborhoods. I mean, eventually, they also moved their parents out into the suburbs as their parents got older. Until the old neighborhoods, the former shops and stores were just empty and deserted, except maybe for a few holdouts where, uh, who had nowhere else to go to. Now, often those holdouts were the mom-and-pop grocery stores that would keep going even after mom or pop had passed. Uh, they adapted better than places that repair shoes or fix small appliances. I mean, shoes and small appliances are thrown away these days, replaced with new ones. But, you know, dry goods can give way to magazines, and produce and cheese can give way to cigarettes and soda. So it was in this particular neighborhood. There was just one store left. Mom had passed away, but Pop was still running the store, selling now instead of, you know, produce and cheese and baklava, selling cigarettes and soda and magazines. But something started to change. The children of the children of the immigrants started to move back into the neighborhoods. Uh, not the grandchildren of the same immigrants that had lived there before, but the grandchildren of different immigrants from different neighborhoods, and sometimes even different cities. These kids felt that something was missing in their lives out in the suburbs, uh, some sort of connection with the past, the rituals that had given life uh, flavor and texture uh, to, to other people, even. They felt that their lives lacked community. And that's what the old neighborhood had. So they came and they rehabbed old townhouses and apartments and hotels into lofts. And uh, these new urban immigrants started to come into the corner grocery store. Now, at first they didn't find much that they really wanted to buy in that store, but this shop was part of their neighborhood and they were going to support it by God. The old grocer noticed them, too, and he would ask them about uh, what they wanted him to carry and uh, about their children and about their jobs. Cigarettes gave way to rice and flour. Beer cases returned to produce cases, and soda was replaced with bottles of water, which seemed really strange to this old grocer because if you wanted water, you just went over and turned on the tap, and it came out. But if they wanted water in bottles, by golly, he would have water in bottles. Well, in the process of cleaning out the old storeroom for some of these new items, he found a sign that Mom, his wife, had made years earlier. And since it was winter holiday time, uh, he pulled the sign out. It was all red and green and gold, and he put it up in the window, and could you go to camera four for just a second? It said, Merry Xmas. This was the sign that he found and that he put up. Okay, back to camera one. 
Well, the next morning, when the daily coffee pilgrimage occurred, uh, the grocery was strangely quiet, but the sidewalk was buzzing. Uh, this Xmas sign that we had seen a moment ago was a symbol of everything that those folks had left the suburbs to escape. Anonymity, commercialism, greed, being strangers to your neighbors, all wrapped up in that one word, which to them somehow took the Christ out of Christmas. So the group of neighbors standing on the sidewalk looked at the sign and decided they just had to do something about it. They had to defend their neighborhood from this encroachment, but, but they had to be careful because they loved their little old grocer. And that is what covenant and community is all about. Not the belief in being right, but the belief in, as Paul puts it, the compassion of Christ. Look, I think I've told you this, but the word in both Greek and in Hebrew for compassion means to be moved deeply down within, to feel deep in your body what the other person is feeling. It actually is related to the same word for when a child moves within the mother's womb. Compassion is to feel for another person the way a woman feels for the child within her. To feel that deeply for others, that is the tender mercy of God within us. That is the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. That is what the incarnation of God who came to pitch a tent in our neighborhood for a while. It's what it's all about. That is the foundation that true community is built on. That is the credo that will save the world. Well, the sidewalk committee for the preservation of the neighborhood decided that maybe they could offer the grocer a new sign to replace the old one. Then he wouldn't feel so bad. They could say, oh, well, that's old. Let's give you something that's pretty and new and all. So they thought of something that would be more in keeping with the season, uh, would be something like uh, Jesus is the reason for the season. They had one of their, their folks who made a really, uh, you know, had a big printer in their office, so they made up the banner that said, Jesus is the reason for the season. And on Saturday morning, they all gathered at the grocery, even before they had their coffee, to present the new banner. Well, not wanting to offend the grocer, they were a bit vague about why they were doing this. And while he was quite pleased with their intent, the grocer was more than a little bit confused. Finally, one of the more bold members of the crowd explained to the old grocer that Mary Xmas seemed to, to you know, just be different from the intent of the season, and it was something that was just too commercial, and it, it really just didn't work for them. Well, this was even more confusing because the grocer explained that as a child back home in Greece, the X, or the letter Chi, was the symbol for Christ. It was the first letter in the word Christ, and it always was an, was an anagram for Christ. So as a boy, well, he learned that when he saw the X, well, he would think of Jesus the baby, but also Jesus the Christ, who was coming to bring them all to the kingdom of God. And then he went on and he told them about the coming into the Greek church and looking up at the ceiling and seeing the pantocrantor, the giant head of Jesus looking over all of them. And he told them about how you would see the icon over at the side, which was Jesus coming up out of hell after the resurrection and reaching out to Adam, reaching out to Eve, reaching out to Noah, reaching out to bring everyone from hell prior to his coming up and the, and the devil in chains with the broken doors of hell at the feet of Jesus. Christmas wasn't just 
about oh, Xmas wasn't just about one season. It was about the whole life of Christ, the incarnation in total. Well, together, they hung the new banner right below the old sign that his wife had made, and the grocer told them how much he appreciated it. And as the young people left, knowing more now, and with their coffee, the old man looked at the two banners and he just shook his head. Such talk. Taking Christ out of Christmas? Christ was the center of Christmas. Always had been. Always would be. I invite you now to participate together in the hymn of promise. today. Zechariah, a new father, is speaking to his newborn son, John the Baptist. He's speaking for the very first time. Yeah, I want you to imagine yourselves in his shoes. What would you say to a newborn sleeping in your arms? What, what would you want them to know on their very first day? What would you feel was important? Now, I imagine that all of you would speak words of love. It's impossible not to speak words of love when you're holding a new baby. And yet, as we grow up, that skill tends to become harder for us to practice. So let us return to our foundation, to words of love, uh, starting with the love for ourselves. Let us pray this prayer of confession together. Holy God, this is in unison, please. Holy, Holy God, God, when John, John was, was born, born Zachariah leaned, leaned down and, and whispered, whispered words, words of love into his, his ear. We, we know, know that, that you do, do the same for us, day in and day, day out, yet, yet we, we fail, fail to hear it. Them. We forget that in the, the beginning, beginning we were, we were made, made good. good. We, we doubt that we could possibly be enough. We hustle for our self-worth and wear ourselves out aiming for perfection. We deflect words of praise. We hide behind shining first impressions. Forgive us. Trusting our worth is the hardest job. Open our ears as you open our hearts 
so, so that, that we, we might rest, rest on, on the foundation, foundation of goodness you have laid for us. Gratefully, Gratefully we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Family of faith, no matter how old we get, God continues to say to us, you are loved, you are forgiven. That is the foundation of our lives. That is the truth upon which we build our home. So breathe deeply. There is grace and peace here. Join me proclaiming this good news. We, we are, are loved. loved. We, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. We, we are, are claimed. This, this is, is our, our foundation. foundation. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Now let us enter into our time of prayer, our community of prayer, beginning with our prayer requests from the... Uh, the folks with us in Zoom. We have a request for a prayer of gratitude um, from Janine Seidler uh, for her friend's mom, Mary Volpe, who uh, is now uh, walking with the angels. Steve Fulmer requests travel blessings for Dan who is on a very long drive from Salem to Texas, family for the holidays. And I would like uh, prayers for my neighbors, Vicki and Jim. Vicki has um, ALS and is not doing well at all. And uh, pray for her to continue her life as comfortably as possible. Steve. So what prayers would you add to these, those of you who are here with us today? Dory? Lena May, who is in the hospital with pneumonia and with COVID. And for those of you who haven't gotten your pneumonia shot, get your pneumonia shot. Are there others? For Alex, who, whose life is chaotic, that he would get help. Doug, for Anna, who is Doug's sister, and for her family, she's struggling as she needs oxygen now continually for breathing. And I'm going to ask, you've, you've been praying for my, for my dear friend Susie Wild, for Mike and Susie. Susie's had uh, a stroke. I, I'd like to ask you to pray for Mike in a different way now. Mike has been diagnosed with colon cancer so he is facing that uh, challenge ahead of himself as well so let me invite you now to be in prayer beloved and eternal god we ask you to pour your holy spirit out upon us there are things in our lives, Lord, that we cannot face alone. We can barely face them with our community. So we thank you that you have given us a community with which we can, we can come forward, we can depend on. For those who need healing, Lord, you have heard them, heard them mentioned, place your healing hand on them, particularly for those who need the healing of the mind as well as the healing of the body. So, uh, such a hard thing. For those who are lost in this world, who are, who are sucked into violence, people who are, are shooters, people who are rioters, we ask, Lord, that you will help them find the way to peace. We know, Lord, that alone we are nothing, but together with you, nothing can stand before us. So now, as with the innocence of children, we pray the prayer that you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive the one who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Thine is the kingdom. Zechariah gave one of the greatest gifts he could to his son. He gave him a foundation of love, words of purpose, pride, love, and belonging. So in turn, remembering that joyful day, we try to make similar impact by giving what we can as well. Um, and we pray for the gifts that we give, our time, our money, our prayers, our talents, our witness. We pray that they will be infused by the Spirit to make more purposeful world of love and belonging that we can be proud of. So let this be the foundation, the very start of a better world as we give. Join me as we bless the offerings that we give throughout the weeks of our lives. Holy God, please join me. You are our home. You and your goodness are the places we return to, the place place we we long to lay lay our heads. As As we we offer offer you our gifts, we pray pray that you would take this offering and turn it into ministry, ministry, using these these gifts to transform the world we live in to better reflect the home. You You have have envisioned for us a home of peace. peace a home built on the foundation of love. Gratefully Gratefully we we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for Holy Communion, I invite you to participate in the hymn, uh, Here is Bread, Here is Wine. We used to sing this before the COVID every time we did communion. So this will be our first time since the COVID that we've sung this hymn again. So join together in this hymn. Methodist Church is open to everyone who truly and earnestly repents of their sins, which means to turn and go on a new path, and who wishes to live this life in love and charity with God and their neighbor. 
join me in our great thanksgiving, one of the oldest prayers that we have in the church. Prepare the way of the Lord. Straighten, Straighten our, our crooked, crooked paths, paths, O God. The day of Christ's coming draws near. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Pray through Pray us now, now Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ, word made flesh, making all things new. Blessed, Blessed are, are you, you Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Blessed are you, Holy Spirit, dissolving every chain of sin that binds us, rebuking every power that enslaves, purifying our hearts, challenging every action not moved by love, and setting all creation free. Blessed, Blessed are, are you, you, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Blessed are you, El Shaddai, feeding your people, gathering us like lambs in your arms, and leading us to life eternal. Blessed, Blessed are, are you, El Shaddai. We know that the, the end that lies before us in all things, the elemental powers of this universe shall be burned away, the heavens vaporize, the earth and all doings exposed for all to see. We, we know, know the, the end, end and, we, and tremble. we tremble. We also know your promise. Out of the conflagration to recreate, out of chaos to reorder, out of such destruction to renew. We, we know, know your promise, promise and we, we rejoice. rejoice. We rejoice for you are with us, coming to us in flesh long ago, coming in to our flesh in bread and cup at this Christ table, coming into this world through the church, in the power of the Spirit, and coming again to complete what you have begun, and now free us to continue. Feed, feed us, us Lord. Feed us, Jesus, feed his, as Jesus fed his disciples on the night that he was betrayed, taking bread, blessing it, breaking it, and saying to those to whom he gave it, this is it's my body, body given, given for you. you. Take, Take, eat, and remember. remember me. Quench our thirst now, as Jesus did that night, taking the cup and giving thanks, and saying to those to whom he gave it, this, this is, is my, my blood, blood poured, poured out, out for, for you. you. Drink, Drink and, and remember, remember me. me. Only you can feed us, God. Only, Only you can, can make us holy. Only you can prepare us for the end to come. Only, Only you, you can, can purify, purify our, our hearts. So come, Holy Spirit, on these gifts of bread and wine and on us. Come, come. Holy Spirit. Feed us with bread that lasts forever, the body of Christ. Slake our thirst with the cup of immortality, the blood of Christ. Come, Come, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And so nourish us in holy living today and all our days, that on that day when all things are recreated, and on these days as we wait for the, fulfill, the fullness to come, the world may see and know in us the love that moves the universe to its true end in a new beginning through Jesus Christ our Lord. By him, with him, and in him, united in the power of the Holy Spirit, all honor and all glory are yours, seated upon the throne, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. For those of you at home, you are invited to partake of the elements during our next hymn. Those of you who are in the sanctuary will re receive the elements as you leave the service. And now I invite you to participate together in O Little Town of Bethlehem. As we that it has been our practice over the last several years that as we approach closer and closer to uh, Christmas Day, we will sing more and more Christmas hymns. So here is our start for the season. O Little Town of Bethlehem.
this service, your service begins. Comfort the homesick. Open your doors to others. Seek sanctuary. Be brave enough to go home by another way. And remember that here in God's house, all are welcome. So come back soon. In the name of our foundation, God, Spirit, and Son, go in peace. Well, as I mentioned, the uh, Tillamook infection rates have taken a turn since Thanksgiving to increase, but we will still be having uh, in-person and online worship this next week. If you're unvaccinated, we invite you to uh, join us online. Uh, uh, you can use the invitation that brought you here this week, or we will be posting them on BBQ and on our Facebook page. Masks will be required within the building and uh, you know all of the, the rest of those restrictions we have right now. But things are changing very rapidly, and we're hoping that um, some of these restrictions can go away soon. We're still planning on having Christmas Eve service. Uh, we're going to join together with our friends down the road at St. Catherine's Episcopal Church. We'll be down at St. Catherine's at 4 p.m., and we'll be having a... Uh, service with lessons and carols so you can all mumble into your masks and uh, a good time shall be had by all so even though our buildings have been closed during this difficult time ministries go on you are aware of our ministries uh, through child and through uh, food distribution the community and particularly this congregation has been so generous in helping pay for those but uh, we are still a bit behind on our general fund that pays for things like utilities and salaries. So I am inviting everyone who can do this to join me in offering a 13 month uh, uh, donation to the church, just one more month of what you give every year. And in a moment, we will have our announcements and you can hear more things. Be blessed in the week to come. This week, as ever, Chef Bill Dickey will be preparing salmon fillets on Tuesday, cheeseburgers on Thursday. Please let your senior friends know about this. They can get a really nutritious meal for $4 or level three. The food pantry continues its very important work on Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 10 until 2. They continue to need all cold weather gear as well as egg cartons, which they're running out of. United Methodist Women meets this Wednesday at 1030. I'm not sure exactly where, but uh, when we're done here, I bet Mary Reeve can tell us. Scriptures for next Sunday, if you're following the lectionary, will be Zephaniah, Old Testament, chapter three, verses 14 through 20. The epistle is to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, and the gospel is from Luke, chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. Special thanks to all those who participated in today's service. Jenny Myers brought us our prelude and postlude. The Advent candle was lit by the uh, Kershaws from Tillamook United Methodist Church. Mary Reef led us in prayer requests, and the COVID quintet led our hymns. Peter Nunn and Pastor Wolf led our scriptures. Uh, Peter also supplied production coordination, and Pastor Wolf also uh, supplied production components, as well as today's sermon. Sheila Moran assisted Peter 
and I am Stephen Fulmer, your Zoom production assistant. Thank you, all of us, for joining us in spirit today.